Puss. Shout out to Puss. my boy E. Keep it going. Puss. This for you, boy. Puss. Boy, I got a unique Puss. I had to get it out the mud. I Puss. I ain't waiting on shit. I yeah, 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 yeah. Check it, check it, check it, man. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the official Miss Jamaica. How's well, it going well, today? Well, well, and we back at it again, man. Mm -hmm. Say, man, hey, I got a guy today, man. He been ripping through the internet waves, man. I, I, I'm i going to be honest with you, I see him on Instagram. That's why he really be getting busy at for me because everybody got their little platform that they like to go on. And, and and when I see this guy, man, hey, man, I can't stop laughing. I ain't going to lie, man. Hey, I got my boy, man, Jesse McDonald, the comedian. What up, what Jesse up? Jesse McDonald. What's up, baby? Yes, I'm here. Man, I'm glad you made it, man. I'm glad I'm here, too. I just don't like this booster seat you got me in. <laughs> Say, man, so, hey, man, so, I, hey, man, I, I always start off, be like, hey, man, just tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started in the whole comedy thing, and if anything else you need to want to get off your chest. Well, I'm comedian Jesse McDonald. I used to go by Lil' J. Okay. But Ricky Smiley told me, said, how long you going to be little? He said, eventually you got to grow up, and if I look up Lil' J, how many Lil' J's going to pop up? He said, start going by your real name. So I Google comedian Jesse McDonald. Nobody pulled up. So I started going by my real name. Wow. I'm originally from Mariana, Arkansas. And the comedy, it was always in me because people used to always talk about me because of the way I walk, um, the way I was just talked about me. So I learned how to talk about myself and learn how to laugh at myself. So when I learn how to laugh at myself, then when other people talk about me, it don't hurt me. So the things that you say about me, I already said about myself and I, would, I already came up with a comeback line. So from there, if you try to talk about me, I knew how to come back off your comeback line and turn it turn the joke on you. That's what y'all do. Yeah, y'all bad boys. I hey hey man, I I could have been in the comedy if I'd have just practiced. It, it ain't it ain't easy because people easy. think. Now you got to write it down or people, how, how it go. Say oh I'm funny. Everybody say I'm funny. There's a difference between neighborhood funny and stage funny. Stage funny, you got to have material. Neighborhood funny, you could talk about Lil E or you could talk about Lil Corey over there with, with the with the busted tires. And you know why his tires got busted because his baby mama bust them out. And it's funny to them. But stage funny, you you got to be able to bring that a whole different way. Well, mm -hmm. the, the thing I can say is uh, Jesse, uh, the comedian Jesse McDonald, because that's the one that don't nobody know about the comedian yes. Jesse McDonald. Um, what? Go ahead. When I, when I see your comedy, man, like I said, anything to keep a smile on people's face, I, I, I mean, it's, it's just, I automatically go to it. I like to smile. Anybody with, anybody that has an uh, a attitude to where it, it, it makes you feel like you can't have a good time, I can't be around them people anyway. Nah, it, it, negative energy brings negative energy. Yeah, yeah. You got to stay positive even when it's negative. Definitely. But what I loved about what you said about um, turning – people talking bad about your or making fun of you into a comedic way. I love that. I wish a lot of people today would do that because you talk about bullying. A lot of kids are affected by bullying and not trying to turn it into a positive way so that it won't affect their lives because there's so many kids out here whether commit suicide or, you know, um, and being a bully themselves. I love the way how you handled it. Yeah. Um, bullying. Well, back in the day, we didn't we didn't call it bullying. bullying. Mm -hmm. We call it a hey, we joining and you playing gonna, the dozen. You gonna, you gonna take it? You gonna get <laughs> playing the dozen? But nowadays, people are so sensitive. I ain't gonna say all people, but some people are sensitive. And what I think what helped me was my uncle always taught me when I failed when I was young. He said, "You ain't handicapped. Get up." Yeah. My cousins never treated me like I was disabled. If they were wrestling, I want to wrestle. Okay, they're going to wrestle rough just like this. Mm -hmm. And they never took it easy on me. So I guess it, it it ain't all about just saying the word bullying. It's the people that, that you're around and the way they treat you. If they treat you like you're disabled, you're going to fall in that disabled category. But if they treat you like you're regular, then you're going to fall in that regular, hey, look, I ain't disabled category. Because I go home every day and got to walk up 20 stairs. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, yeah. let me ask you this. I see you, uh, you you mentioned Ricky Smiley a while ago. What about, uh, I think it was D-Ray? I see you on, yeah. I see you with a lot of different comedians. Yes. D-Ray, D-Ray, that's my boy. I, and it seemed like thing it. Is the, I traveled all the way. I met him in Little Rock. 
I traveled to L.A. just to go to one of his shows. And I, everywhere he looked, he seen me. Okay. So we was in L.A., and this guy named Spike was like, man, you funny, but you ain't going to get on my stage. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. D-Ray seen me. He said, hey, you should perform here? I said, not. I said, no. He said, well, get ready. I'm going to put you up. He said, you better kill it. He put me up there, and I murdered it. Oh. And Spike came back. He said, man, I like you. You funny. You found a way to get your ugly ass on up here on the stage. <laughs> and ever since then, I, I just toured and just followed D-Ray, and all of a sudden, he put gave me a chance one time in Memphis to perform, and I did the show, and I killed it. And once I killed it, he was like, I said, when the next show? He said, Hartford, Connecticut. I said, wow. well, I want to go. He said, you know how far that is? I said, I don't care. Just tell me I'm on it, and I'm there. He said, that's a long way. I'm like, I'm there. He told me to show up, and ever since then, I've been going. That was 24 hours with driving. Wow. Wow. So but did the dedication was showed him, hey, look, you know, hey, look, this guy really trying to do it, and that he proved to me, he proved to me that he wanted to get there, even if he had to get there by himself. Wow. That's crazy, because I, I know I remember hearing stories on Eddie Griffith, how he went up to L.A. and was sleeping on on the benches and everything else, trying to get in the game when mm -hmm. when when he first, and then he tried to act like he was his own, like uh, you know, when they have the assistance or somebody yeah. else on the phone. Yeah, he he had to play that role too, just to get into certain places because he didn't have all the things that it took to build yeah. up the 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 you know the infrastructure. Some people won't talk to you unless you got rep representation. It don't yeah. matter how good you is. So some and it's crazy because you can be real good now and day. It ain't even all about how funny you is or how good you is in music. It's all about how many followers you got. Yeah, mm -hmm. you I ain't see got a certain that. amount of followers. Then you know you could be you could be the best, but if you ain't got that many amount of followers, then they're not gonna mess with you. Wow, that's so the it, first thing they look at nowadays. It's really setting the standard. Mm -hmm. You can have a million followers and be garbage. I yeah. know a lot of them like that. Name them. No. -uh. <laughs> Uh -uh. <laughs> He's like, I ain't put uh -uh. nobody the, 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 the reason I'm not going to name them because just guess what? With you. They may be garbage right now, but they may but blow they, up. But, they, but they still working on their craft and they haven't gave up. So everybody that at one point, because well, I was at one point was garbage, but people constantly telling me, hey, look, that's garbage. It made me get better because that criticism made me want to do better and be like, look, I got to go prove to this person that, hey, look, I'm better than what they think I am. But everybody's sense of humor is totally different because, like, we've been to comedy shows and or even at home when um, him, my daughter and um, Elvis showing me something funny and I'm looking at it like. Yeah, we don't even have the same type of but funny. But they be cracking up like Me and crazy. my daughter, we rock out. But, the but same her, way. she don't get it. She don't, she don't think it's funny. I'm, no. I'm totally different. So, like, I love Eddie Griffin. I love Monique, so I'll oh, go to Eddie some. Grip, them two right there, they say whatever's on their mind. Man. Right, but you see, what I really loved about him was not only the jokes, but the fact that he gave me history. I know that you're doing your research, not just telling the jokes, but about um, whether politics or society or where we came from. He started giving us knowledge, and I like that about his shows. It's not just about a joke, but really just to educate people as well. So to me, I like that. What about Dick Gregory? I've never. If you like, nah, Eddie, yeah, I like, if I you like, like Eddie Gregory. Griffin, then you would love Dick. Griffin. Yeah, he's straightforward Dick too. Dick Gregory is any educational. He, he educational and he's straight. He's funny too. He's not gonna sugarcoat nothing. Okay, and the crazy I like thing that. is, I like, I like, I like the fact that white and black people show up to their shows and they be mm -hmm. like cracker and hunky and now be looking like, ooh, they gonna get us killed. <laughs> 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 Let me ask and, you this. Oh, go ahead. Are no, you, go ahead. Um, so being a comedian, who have you came up behind? Like I gotta go on the stage after him, and you was kind of like, "Dang, I gotta nobody. go." Nobody, don't give me that. Nobody, don't give me that. Comedian nobody. Jesse McDonald is no. in here telling him, man. Up, I didn't came up nobody. after the headline. Who, who, give me I'm a big name. That you, give me a big name that you went in after that you was like, "It's nothing." That, but I would probably be like, "Whoa." Oh man, I didn't work with so many people. Give me a name. It's, it's hard to say. It don't, it don't matter who you put me behind. I'm so comfortable with myself. That I know what I came to do and now, I know what I'm gonna do. So that? it don't matter who you put me behind, I know what I came to do. Cause everybody got their own category of jokes. So if I put you behind, say Dave Chappelle, and you have to come up. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> now I heard uh, other boy like like even Kevin, uh what's his name? Little Shaw Kevin. Kevin Hart. Uh, Kevin Hart and and, and and uh Chris Rock, I've heard them say they was even intimidated by Chappelle. You know, the thing is, when you know what God put you on earth to do, it your talent is your talent. 
you got to be, you you got to, if you feel nervous going behind somebody, then that means you should feel nervous going behind just anybody that put you, they put you behind. So just because this person got a bigger name doesn't mean they're not as funny as you or as great as you. You can still go up there behind that comedian and give the same energy, but you got to have it in your heart and in your mind that, hey, look, I'm comforted where I'm at. I know what I'm finna do. Mm-hmm. What what about Day Day? What, what's that boy name? Mike Epps. Yeah, Mike Epps. That's my boy. You work you work with him. Yeah. You you've been I, you I, did I shows with him. With Mike. I didn't work with Mike. Mike Mike is real cool. He um he told me, hey, just keep doing what you're doing because people always say, hey, what would you, what would the advice would you give people today to to make it to where you made it? Is my best advice is keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing got you here to meet me. And if it got you here to meet me, mm-hmm. what you're doing going to mm-hmm. continue to grow to help you meet other people. Because mm. what I did may not work for you. I got a disability. Some people probably felt sorry for me and be like, hey, look, we're going we gonna, to we gonna help this handicapped guy. But at the same time, I didn't see no disability. I just say, hey, look, I seen people that I'm finna meet. I'm going to take this and I'm going to use it as a stepping stone and I'm going to keep grinding. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So have you ever ran out of um, jokes? Yeah. Mm-mm. <laughs> you, you you can't run out of jokes because I can never stop talking about me. Or do you ever find that because, okay, a lot of times when I'm going to go watch a um, comedy show, I'm looking them up on YouTube, listening to their jokes, a lot of that. And then sometimes when I go and watch them, it's the same jokes they bring back. But the thing is, sometimes, yeah. well, this is the way that went. You have to have a set. If you don't have a set, you'll be rambling. What I mean by a set, like, sometimes you get up there, you just do jokes, and you do jokes, you do jokes. And they're not, they they funny, but some of them may not hit because you don't have them lined up. But when you line them up to where one joke correspond with the next joke and constantly go, once you get you a set set, you know your set is funny. Then you work that set. After you work that set for so long, then you go to gravitating over to a new set. So, so how long it takes you to do a new set? Like how long do you keep that one set for? You can keep it a year or two. Okay. About two years, but if you got funny jokes, sometimes it don't matter how many times you change your set, it's certain jokes that you want to hear. Rudy Ray Moore, you cannot bring him here without hearing Signify Monkey. Yeah. So yeah. you got cer- certain jokes, no matter how, how many sets you change, people want to hear that joke. Nah, no matter if you've been to that and you didn't heard it. And you plenty, heard of it time. plenty of times. And you can say the joke with him and it still be funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you think that... Um, you, okay, so when you you just went to, I know you said you was in Shreveport, then you went to Alabama, mm. then you went to Atlanta. I went to Atlanta. And you just got back up this way. I you think, already got shows booked out. We got shows booked out. Carpet DM, uh, we stayed, we've been, we been busy. I've been touring with Kerwin Claiborne, and thanks to him and Tim Bay and all the other people that have been giving me a chance to get out here and open up for them and build my platform and cheating ass Myron, my cousin. So with me building my platform is able is enabling me to now be able to go out and start my own uh, comedy tour. So that's what we're working on now. So, so you how was it transitioning from like the the being just on the road and going and going to the shows and being, you know, just by word of mouth to transitioning over into this internet phase. How how was that? How was that transition? And how did you adapt? Is it better on this side or was it better on that side? Well, you appreciate the grind from back in the day. That's that's what because I Because you 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 hand in hand, you grinding. It's not like, oh, hit enter, now I'm famous. <laughs> it's like, hey, look, I drove to these spots 14 hours, 22 hours, slept in my car at nighttime because sometimes you didn't want to spend that money to buy a room because, you know, you had to pay for gas to get back here. But one thing I learned, I always hear of merchandise. If you don't have merchandise, once you get off stage and you're funny, That's good. people don't know who you is. And good example, this weekend I went to Chicago. Went okay. to Chicago, I got there, got my luggage. And the, the crazy thing is, I thought a luggage was mine. I grabbed it. A lady grabbed my luggage. But in my luggage, all I had was all T-shirts. And I didn't know that I had a luggage. And on my T-shirts, I got all my social media on it. Yeah. And all my social oh, media has lucky. my number. So they went in there, and they pulled me up, and they called me and they said, hey, look, you got our suitcase. I'm like, huh? She's like, yeah, you got our suitcase, and we got yours. I'm like, and I'm looking like, how you find me? Then I thought about it. All my T-shirts got all my. Got that on it. And wow. I was able to go back and switch shirts and take it. And I mean, what, switch suitcases. How fast did it, did it happen? Pretty quick? Um, 
Probably about a couple of hours. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but I, he I didn't was able, realize that he had Yeah, you hours. didn't realize. You yeah, just yeah. rolled. And the crazy thing is, because I was in Chicago, I waited on the other comedians to get there so we can go do a show in Wisconsin. Okay. So I just had a friend to pick me up and drop me off at the hotel. They met me at the hotel. We swapped suitcases. And, wow. And then she didn't even really know who I was, and she followed me. And she said, oh, oh, my God. <laughs> she followed your Instagram. Said, you, you. I'm like, yeah, I'm me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. So, um... So so where 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 are you performing at next? Next where um this weekend I'm at um where are we at? We're in Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. Jacksonville, Florida after Jacksonville. Florida. When you come back to Dallas. I'm in Dallas all the time. You like where do you where do you frequent? Is it somewhere we can see you here in Dallas? Um I it's basically it's on the tour. Okay. Because right now I'm working with the tour and just having nobody really call me from Dallas. That's what I'm saying. I'm waiting so on you to come back to that. Dallas because you be right here, but then you have to. You live in Dallas, or I live in Dallas, but you travel a lot because you're not even performing here. You yeah. booked out of town. It's so crazy because a lot of times people in your own cities, like you, have always have to go out first and then you come back here. Anybody go to Arkansas? Do you go to Arkansas? I go to Arkansas to go see my kids. No, to family. perform. <laughs> No, nobody don't be, it's don't just be crazy. And then, it, Prophet without honor in his I, own I didn't, country. I, I didn't had I didn't had a chance to where I asked the guy, I said, Hey look, mm -hmm. you got a comedy club in, in Little Rock and I say, um, when you gonna book me to do a comedy show here? Mm -hmm. He told me never. I oh, said, Whoa. Wow. I say, I say, Okay. I say, guess what? Next time I come to your show, I mean your your comedy club, somebody gonna be paying me to perform. Exactly. He exactly. said, We'll see. The next month I came and I headlined wow. and I was getting paid. See, and he told me he said, "Man, when you gonna stop playing and come on do a show for me?" I said, "When that money right." Exactly. See, he had the opportunity to recognize you. That's why a lot of times, you know, we're in Dallas. We always try to recognize people who are here, people who don't get the recognition that they should get. Because, like, why are we gonna try to look for people who are out of Dallas or out of Texas? To have them, whether virtually, come on our show or ask them to fly in to come on our show. Well, see, it doesn't make me. sense. There's he a lot me. of talent here. Yeah, he know me, though. And he didn't even try to book you before. Mm -mm. You see, that's a shame. And have I, have no, I, have, I have no hard feeling towards him. You know, I mean, because, I mean, at the same time, it's a business. But at the same time, my job is to make sure I do my work so good to where you have no other choice but to pay me. Right. And everything happens for a reason and in its due time. That's how I look on life. That's what a lot of people don't understand. You don't, people be like, every, every year people, some people say, this is my year. It's my year. But the thing I learned with this being your year, it may not be your year to blow up, but it could be your year to help somebody else blow up. And once that person blow up, they can bring you. Exactly. Some people are like, oh, I'm not helping them because if I help them, that's going to get them on and I'm not going to be on. Well, if I help you and you get on, if I help you get on, you may not be the person to help me get on. It may be the person that I introduce you to, be like, well, how you meet him? Well, this little guy over here with the crutch, tall cup holder, that's the guy that, that introduced me. Like, hey, look, I need to meet him. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what in, who inspired you to um, pursue comedy when I know you said you, you were um, practicing to do your own jokes before someone else told a joke on you right mm -hmm. so but you had to have a comedian at that point that you looked up to and like man he's good I like him oh so many because everybody different but I did I looked at a lot of comic comic view and I watched all comic of view I watched I watched a lot of the comic views the what's the um the other one where they used to get raunchy um it was before comic view um, I cannot think of no, it. I don't know why I'm trying it's, to think of playing gonna, TV, but it ain't come. coming to you. Def Jam. It, Def Jam. Mm -hmm. Def Jam. When you watch yeah. Def Jam, you start learning everybody got their own style of comedy. Like, people like, well, Martin how, how can you compare Mike Epps to the Kevin Hart? Well, Kevin Hart tells stories about his family. Mike Epps do hood Good comedy, yeah. but at the same time, it's still jokes about the family. Yeah. Then you got the Ricky Smiley's in the in the um, what's his name, um, Steve Harvey. Mm -hmm. They do church church material, but at the same time, they still got a little hood side that they where they can throw it in there to where it can bring. So it breaks up the so so 
what do you say? Some people be like churchy, churchy. Yeah. Right. Breaks yeah. it up to where you know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, okay, he doing this, doing that. You know, I've been inspired by by like Steve Harvey and uh, Ricky Smiley. You know, they get over, I think they tap into, they tapped into a place where it was okay to, it was okay to love God, but still be funny. Yes, and I learned. You know, that, I watched that, that. that. That's what helped me a lot when I when I would watch Ricky Smiley or Steve. I I, I already love God. Sometimes I would be too too. You know, I'd be too uh, passionate. Yeah, I'm too too spiritual. You know, I was. I, you know, I'm for the. You know, I I mean, love God to a point where I don't need to be. I mean, you can't talk because you ain't trying to get yourself together. But when I see those guys, they kind of you know level it out to where you can be. It's okay. I did. I be doing churches. And I did this oh, yeah? church. It was like, it was back in the day type of church. And I was like, I got to wake them up to a different side. Mm-hmm. And I told the, I was like, look, can y'all patch my tablet in? And they were like, a tablet? I thought you were doing jokes. I said, yeah, I got music. They said, wait a minute, what kind of music? I said, just trust me. I got good music. <laughs> and I came out on Frankie Beverly and Mays. All right, now. Ooh, they was looking at me like, I know he ain't playing Frankie Beverly in church. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, hold up. I said, see, y'all looking at me, y'all judging me. I'm like, let me tell y'all. Y'all got y'all way of talking to God. I got my own way of talking to God. Everybody can't talk to God the same way you do. Exactly. Exactly. I said, you don't believe me, watch it. Sing the words of this song. What do it first start off? You make me happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. This you can tell. And like, Jesus, when nobody else was there, guess what? You stood you, you, right beside that me. Is, that is. I don't think I do throw Jesus in there. You got it. There you go. So and it's I all about a mindset, a, a mindset, right? One, once I brought them there, it's like they start singing the song. Wow. And the energy, you know what I'm saying, came, and I just brought, brought my material from there. And they be like, how do you take your hood jokes to church? Because you got to know how to clean it up. One thing I learned, if you can't do clean material, you can't go nowhere. Right. Yeah. Clean right. material, you can go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Some people can't do clean material. So when you can't do clean material, it blocks your money. It blocks out the things that you can go do. One time I did a show and I was cursing right in the beginning. And I heard somebody in the crowd say, you can't curse. I split my whole set right just right off there. listening to them right. and went straight clean. And they were like, wow, I never seen nobody that can do that. It's because I would already prepared myself to say, hey, look. Any situation. You got to be prepared. Because you vibe off your audience. Exactly. Well, really, I vibe off myself because the audience can be dead. So if I'm vibing off them dead, dead, then I'm going to bring dead That's material. right. But I know my energy to myself is up. And as long as I keep myself up going, if you don't laugh out, like, forget it. That was funny to me. Mm-hmm. And then I start laughing, and then I go right back into my set. Have you ever found an audience where you're telling jokes, telling jokes, and they're not responding? They're just I, looking at you like... They call, don't they call that something when you, when you go out there and you... and, 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 and and they call it like just dead, yeah, right? it didn't you it, it it like you you it didn't do nothing. Yeah, I didn't. What did they call and it? And what did you do mm. that time? What did they call well, it. The son? thing is, with that, you still keep your same energy. You don't drop. The thing is, you hate to get a silent crowd. A silent crowd could say, "Look, you're killing yourself," or at the same time, a silent crowd could mean they're really paying attention to what you're saying. Yeah, because I didn't did a crowd and they really didn't laugh. But they came up to me at the end and said, man, you you killed, killed it, it, man. You was good. Wow. So it, it's silent kind of, crowd can, can go, go either. Ways. Now, if you doing a joke and they're laughing, they laughing, they laughing, then you tell the joke and everybody just get quiet, now you be like, oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> and that happened to me. My first time getting booed was here in Dallas. What? I was just about I, to ask you if yeah, you ever got yes, booed. I That's did. what I was talking yeah. Like when you yeah. just totally yeah. just, it didn't happen. Yes, I, I didn't got booed. I was doing did. a show here at Hyenas. And I didn't know this is my first time in Dallas doing comedy. I started talking about it was a gay girl said something to me. And I started talking about the gays. And they say, Boo, you ain't funny. He was get on Trail he was on Trail Creek down there by side. They say, get See your the I mean, uh, what they Green's call that? Avenues were around that Trail Creek yeah. and uh yeah, I know yeah. where you was at. They told there. me they were like, Get your handicapped ass off the stage. I said, Ooh. <laughs> ah! I said, I said, Look, let me go and tell y'all real quick. I ain't even no comedian. I come here to rap. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy because the guy that that's supposed to be managing me, Ozil, oh, well, Ozil, Ozil Graham, he got the fade shot. Mm-hmm. Right, I'm gonna put him on the spot because he always put me out. Wait, there. What's up? Well, what's o- his name? Ozil Graham. Ozil got, Graham. Yeah, what's he got up, the baby? Fade shot. Ozell finna take off and leave me in there. Oh, Ozell oh, finna like, leave my like, boy. Ozell, you, you should have did that. How, how you gonna leave me? But see, 
I'm talented and I'm good at what I do. I said, you know what? I didn't come to do no comedy. I came to rap. I started rapping and I did this song called I Ain't Drunk, I Just Walked This Way. Give me a little bit of it. You put it on the spot. Born with a limp, but I know it's a pimp, so tell me why you're hating it. When I step up in the club, I got you scared to show me love. Know what's going through your mind, see what your friend's gonna say. I be going through the same thing like every single day. Now I'm the same as you, but with the arch in my back. Don't be asking, am I drunk? Cause you know it ain't like that. Handicap, but I'm still making ends on the D low. You heard in my last song, Money Be My Stilo. I didn't gain the fame, but now I got to get the cheese. A lot of brothers ain't going on the corner stacking G's. Remember back in the day when this player was straight broke? So I started rapping because it bring me cheese. But now I got them chicken heads falling to their knees. Whoa. And two all you ones that will never give me the time of day. Quit looking my way and trying to get me for my pain. Because I ain't drunk. I just walked this, this way. way. I hear you, baby. Wow. Yeah. And, and, that, and what, how long ago did you write that? In 95. Wow. So you bring that, you flipped it on them. I flipped it. I did that, that I ain't drunk and everybody got the vibe with me. And once they got the vibe with me, I said, look, let me go and give y'all my testimony. Yeah. And see, I got a gospel, I got a gospel comedy set. Okay. So it's like, it's a testimony, but I started throwing jokes in there. And Brought them right back. And they jumped right back into me, and I hear them, and I got up off stage. I said, that's my time. Thank y'all. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. Drop the microphone. Bow. Bro, yeah, I got him. But when I dropped the microphone, I fell too. Didn't have nobody else to help me get up, because Ozell had left me. <laughs> oh, Ozell. Ozell, he didn't leave, did he, for real? No, nah, he came he, back. He came and back. When, when, when the crowd got back with me, he said, that's my artist. That's my artist. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's my boy. So you know, be that back, way. Have you been back there to perform again after that? Yes, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't did pretty much all the A A club ca- comedy clubs. You got your A list, you got your B list, and you got your C list. A list are like improv, funny bones. Yeah, you- so I did all the major ones pretty much from from the East Coast to the West Coast. Wow, That's good. Midwest to the South. Who would you say was your what, what state was your hardest state? I haven't I Texas. Haven't. I haven't had no hearts. Because you make I, it good everywhere I guess, you go. People, the first thing people see that look, Crutch come up on the stage, they were like, at any point in time, he going to throw that thing down. And it they don't know. Part of your act, <laughs> I'm not throwing this thing down. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped this crutch. You might well say, shoot me. If there's a younger cat, a young kid that uh, he coming up, you know, young like you was when you first got in the game, and he want to get into co- being a comedian. He loved to make people laugh. Um that's what he want to do. What would you suggest? How would he start? Believing in himself first. You got to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in you, how could the next person believe in you? Invest into yourself. When you invest into yourself, you work harder when it's your own time. When I say invest in yourself, it don't necessarily mean money. When you invest your own time into critiquing your craft, then it works. Go support the ones that you like. Go. The more you go support, the more you go to learning. The more you're around, the more people go to noticing you. Sometimes you don't think they notice, but they watching. They're like, this guy at every one of my shows, who is he? And eventually they'll say something to you. Mm-hmm. And that'll kind of motivate you to be like, oh, they notice me. They're watching me. Now when they get ready to give you a chance to get on stage, have your material ready. It don't take no long. People are like, oh, I need 30 minutes. I need 20 minutes. All it takes is a good three to five minutes. Three to five minutes on stage is a long time. It's a long time. It's even longer when you're not funny. Mm. <laughs> so a good three to five minutes of good material, and please make sure you watch the material you're using. Make sure you're not using nobody else's material because they will call you out. <laughs> if you have somebody yeah. using somebody else's material. Um, hey, people, I, people are fighting over jokes. I know. I've heard people say that somebody stole their joke and they're using it and they took their joke. But, sometimes, but some people tell other people jokes better than what they was telling it. Exactly. But at the same time, people are like, no, that's not, that's not their joke. But sometimes, don't you think that, like, I could sit down here and write a joke and not realize that somebody actually told that joke because so, people think alike. And that's true. But it all it's all on the delivery and the setup of the joke. Mm-hmm. Like you may y'all may the joke may be the same, but the setup may be different. Delivery may be different. So mm-hmm. that's what you want to be aware of your setup, your delivery of the joke. Mm. So I mean, 
Because I ain't going to lie, I, think I thought I had a little something back in the day. <laughs> you probably had it. You just didn't I didn't it. pursue it. You didn't, if you didn't pursue it, then But I made, you know, you know I, I mean, I could make a, I could, I had a crowd of people. Give me like, a, you always put me on the spot. Let me get a joke. I don't have <laughs> tell, one like tell that. Tell me a no, joke. No, that, that'll make me nervous. <laughs> I, ain't, I don't write it. I'd have to, it's organic. it have to happen when we are just hanging out. Hey, anybody ever tell you you sound like <laughs> Mr. Brown? Nah, nobody yeah. told me hey, that. You sound, you sound just like Mr. Brown. You met this guy. I ain't met him, but um, I, I sound like you hear the yeah, tone. Yeah, I hear it. Really? At, at any time, I'm looking for Cora to walk through that door. <laughs> <laughs> see, he no jokes. He, he on the spot with y'all look, it. Y'all so, look see, just I like, can see you telling jokes, ranking on people. That's your yeah. joke. Yeah. Oh, I be ranking like on people. Browns. Yes, that's your joke. Is that what I do? Mm -hmm. Okay, I talk about people. about people. Got Mr. Brown and Cora right wow, here. Wow, <laughs> we got him right here. See, he know how to do it. He put it together quick. You got to watch this guy. So, um. You and St you said uh, you and Ricky Smiley. How did you meet Ricky? How did y'all end up meeting? He came did a show. Well, we had a competition in Little Rock. Okay. The, whoever won the competition get to open up for Ricky. Oh wow! I came through. I murdered it. Really? I really won. But me being me, wasn't being selfish. The girl that they said won, she had a bigger crowd than me. So they say we're gonna give her one night. We're gonna give you one night. I said that's cool. Long as I get the chance to perform. It, it wasn't all about trying to get all the stage time. So she got one night, and I got the second night. The second, when Ricky seen me, he say, he told the he told the radio station, he say, it's this guy y'all keep saying, Lil J is funny. Soon he seen me, he just looked at me and just started laughing. He said, you gotta be him. <laughs> I did my show. When I did my show, I was so funny that when he started off his set, his first fifteen to twenty minutes was talking about me. Wow. And he had to go back and regroup and come back out. And he took me on the road. Me, him, Doug Williams went to Nashville. That was my first big paid show. Really? I did, my first big paid show was five hundred dollars. That's what I'm talking and about. I baby. was like, ooh, wee! <laughs> I was like, this, this is good here. So, and, that's what's up, man. I mean, so you you actually went out and and kicked it with I, with Ricky like that. I went out and I just started going out to support him. He's real humble. I went when he did TV One, his TV show. Um, what is with the Ricky Smiley uh -huh, show? Uh huh. They did a premiere when it first came out. He didn't know I was coming. I showed up. And when I showed up, his manager them knew I was coming. And when he finally seen me, he said, when you get here? I'm like, I'm here. He's I like, I got here today. He said, wow. He said, when you leaving? I said, when it's over. <laughs> he said, when it's over? He said, let me pay for your hotel room. I said, nope. He said, let me pay for your gas. I said, nope. He said, come on. I got to pay for your rental car or something. I said, no, nah, I came here to support you. It's all about you. I like I had enough gas and money and everything to get That's here. Good. Really, I didn't, but I didn't want to, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. It was about him, and I just told him I just came to support you. And me not taking that money made him go on the radio the next day, and he talked about me about 20, 30 minutes, telling people how humble I was and how he offered to do all these things, and I never would take it. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, hey, look, you know, I came to support you. And he said a lot of a lot of celebrities don't get that love to where they say, hey, look, I just come to support you. When you go to supporting that artist, then that artist got a chance to reach back and pull you. But if every time you're reach, reaching out to them, you got your hands out, now they go to looking like, man, here they come. They want something. Wow. Not only that, it shows you how genuine you are because it's hard to find genuine people, especially when you have reached somewhere in your life as an artist and you have that money and stuff like that. Just like what you said, people are always having their hand out. You don't find genuine people who you can really rely on or trust and know that they truly just like me as an mm -hmm. artist. You know what I mean? When I brought up Ricky Smiley, I, it was because, remember, we had Young Bleed uh, on here. Uh, we well, he had him on the show on Boss Talk. And uh, he was saying that, you know, Rick, Ricky, when he played that How You Do That There, yeah. that's his song. And he said he always liked it because Ricky always let his part play, you know, because everybody made that song kind of about Master P. Mm -hmm. But really it was his song. It was a it remix. Was young Bleed. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Young Bleed was like he just loved the fact of how Ricky shined a light on him and was respectful in how he done it. Yeah, I did D-Ray like that. It was his birthday the other day, and um, I asked to do Dallas with him. He said, well, we really already fooled. But he'd say, he always say, if you show up, I got you. But I didn't end up showing up. I ended up doing other shows. But I sent a bottle of Don Julio back okay. to him. Awesome. And when they when they gave it to him, they FaceTimed me, and they gave it to him. He said, Jesse, thank you, man. Just, man, just, this just made my day. <laughs> and it's, it's not to just say, hey, look, I did this. It's just to say, hey, look, I appreciate 
the the love that you give to me because anytime you didn't got out to the point to where you can go on, you can just show up at people's shows and they give you a chance to go on stage and shine, then, you know, that's a blessing. So you got to turn around and give them their roses while they're wow, alive. Yeah. You can't say when he passed away, oh, man, I love D-Ray, man. I, man, that's my dog. You know, I mean, I'm glad, I'm grateful that the guy that I've been working with, um, I met him over 10 years ago, and he used to bring me in the show. And I was like, man, I need you to manage me. And over the time, we were trying to figure out to where he can manage me, and it would make sense. Mm-hmm. And I started going on the road with them with Kerwin, and the first time, Kerwin Claiborne, and I would tell them, man, look, you ain't even got to pay me. Just let me come on stage. I sell my merchandise. I know what I was capable of for selling merchandise. So he gave me a chance, and then I just started continue to work hard, not just coming up on the on the show to be a comedian. I learned how to make myself act so, um a helper to the team. I learned everybody music. I learned how to DJ everybody music wow. during the show. I would go in there before the show. I would do a sound check. I know certain people's voices. Hey, look, you need to pull bass out of it. His voice is too deep to have this much bass. And once I did that, and he seen that. I was a help to the team. He turned around and he started managing me. So big shouts out to Elton Pope with Carpet hey. DM. That's awesome. Hey. So we think that, well, I thought that, you know, when you're a comedian, it's all about just telling jokes. But now you're, you know, letting me know there's a lot more than just, just doing that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You can, and it is crazy because I was, I was standing outside at one show and people were walking in. They didn't know who I was. I'm like, hey, how you doing? They say, no, I'm sorry. I ain't got no change. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do I look homeless? Wow. <laughs> I, came, I came up on stage. He looked at me. He's like, oh, oh my. I said, don't worry about it. I said, I ain't going to get you. <laughs> i like, yeah. but you better buy a T-shirt from me at the end. Already, uh-huh. man. What else you got for my guy, Mr. Jesse McDonald, the comedian extraordinaire? Love the way you, hey, I love your Instagram, man. I'll be tripping off of you, uh-huh. man. You something else, man. How, what, what, made you, what made you start doing those skits like that? I don't know. I just, I would, I, I don't know. I just start doing, working with different people. And the thing is, what happened was when they say COVID, <laughs> that what they call it. <laughs> they call it COVID. Yeah, they call it COVID. When it hit, I noticed a lot of comedians were sitting at home. They was working, but right? they wasn't working. So I said, you know what? I want to work with this person, this person, and this person. So I said, you know what? I'm going to drive to their city. Already. And I drove to their city, and we just started doing doing comedy, doing jokes, and they respected the fact that I would I would get up and I would drive to mm-hmm. them and be like, let's let's do it. And we started doing videos, and I found out, hey, look, I'm a professional follower. Wow. <laughs> I am that 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 guy that every time I see certain people, they be like, ooh, let's do a video. You got to follow. But if, <laughs> if the follow don't make sense, it's not no good at following. That's right. So, right. you know, and you got, you got people in Dallas that I ran into that, I love that I've been wanting to work with for the longest, and I reached out. It was funny because I was in Atlanta, and the guy the other day I was recording, the guy said, you know um, Bubba Dub? I like, yeah. He said, well, his manager, my partner. I said, man, I want to work with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he made the phone call, and I hit Bubba Dub. He said, man, look, when you get to Dallas, man, let's work. Oh, that's so that's love. We, we we finna we finna work. We finna rock it out. We finna, awesome. we finna bust the internet open, and I'm open to work with anybody. I don't care, you know what I'm saying? I'm I will not work with anybody because you never know who that person is that you're trying to work with. Sometimes and sometimes I learn, well I ain't gonna say sometimes, I learn the people that got the most money in the game is the ones that probably got about two hundred followers on Instagram. Already. So Them people that got millions of followers, that that's pretty much all they got. Mm-hmm. Some of them. So what you're saying is money don't equate to followers. It don't. Our followers of, don't equate, uh, equate to money. Yeah, because because mm-hmm. of business people, business people are they got a couple of followers, and sometimes they hit you in your inbox, and you be like, ah, this person ain't got that many followers, I ain't gonna reach out to them, ain't gonna hit them back. Because I reached a person hit me in my inbox, he didn't have many followers, but he was so constant hitting me, and I was already responding. I liked this conversation, and when I hit him, he said, "Man, come to Atlanta, I'm put you in the studio." I drove to Shreveport. Come to find out I had a show, because me and my girl were going to go. She went down the street for it with me, and then come to find out we got that date early. Okay. I had to turn around, come back, and bring her back home, because she had to go to work. Mm-hmm. Turn around, drove back to Shreveport, 
did the two shows, left there, went to Alabama. After I did the show in Alabama, went straight to Atlanta. He said, I'm going to let you sleep tonight. We'll get up in the morning and hit it. I said, no, nah, I'm here now. Yeah. And I dropped two songs that night. Wow. And I didn't realize how big the studio was. And come to find out, Neo record was there. Usher recorded there. James Brown. Wow. Some of the biggest names record there. And they liked my energy. And it was like, they say, anytime you're in Atlanta, you're welcome to come by here. Man, that's a blessing. Because awesome. you never know what, you know, you know, you just don't. I, I'm a god feel person, man. You never know what God is doing. You you can't really just, you can't scope it by your own intelligence. Yep, and I don't like the fact that people be wearing these masks, talking about, you're going to die from this mask. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, that, that mask don't stop nothing. It ain't like Jesus going to come down here and be like, oh, man, I was going to get you. I got your mask on. <laughs> that's so true, man. People be tripping about, what about that mask? It's coming off next week in Texas. I look at Greg what, Abbott said it's coming off in Texas. Hey, I look at whatever God got for me, it's for me. It's for you. That that mask ain't gonna stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, you can what walk else you around got? in the bubble. So you know how people always talk about like it's example a hairstylist. You're a hairstylist, you but your hair always looking terrible when you're at home. They don't always so my question to you is when you're at home, are you always cutting up, telling yes. jokes and is yes, that you yes. all the time? Yes. Me, me, me and <laughs> me <laughs> and the girl looking. my girlfriend be getting mad because me and her daughters we always doing TikToks. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't no TikTok person, but when I found out the fun that you can have with TikTok, it's like, man, we having fun. So me and my girlfriend, we do we do a couple of TikToks. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm 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 be I'm gonna be looking that up. We did a couple of TikToks. What's your you know, TikTok handle? Uh, it's it's my name. Everything's still the same. Okay, I okay, comedian Jesse McDonald. Exactly. All right, yeah, we are gonna see you on there. See how your girl but, get but, down but with me, her. But me and the kids, man, we have they like it to wear because I I tell them all the time, like, look, you got to continue to do it. You wanna you really want to grow. And her daughter, she was like, she said, I got I got eight thousand followers. She said, I gotta get to ten. She said, I'm stuck. So every time she say she's stuck, we'll do a video. She said, you got to fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did, that's good. We did that one video, and it took off. And I like it because you never know who you're expiring, you know that's what I'm saying, right. to, to, to do things. And it's to be able to work with them, and they show me how to work it and her, one of her daughters, I dress up. Uh, she must just see. I think I would dress good today, cause normally she'd tell me, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, you can't wear that. That's that. That ain't in style." That's. <laughs> And, and she didn't say nothing to you. Yeah, today. she she say that. I guess I'm dressed good today. You look good, man. Norm, you looking real good. Cause normally she tell me, mm, mm, that that don't go. That ain't gonna work. That don't that don't work. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's how that's, many kids go do ahead. you have? I got three that I made, and I got three step three kids. That I made. And, Three that I and, made. And Three steps. Yeah, and how old are they? Um, let's start with fourteen, seven. No, she finna be fourteen, seven, and one. Wow. The one. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> one. <laughs> one. One is it. That's that was, it. That was it. Hey man, it, but boys it, and girls. Good mix. One boy, two girls. Okay. Beautiful man. Yeah, but told Doctor cut the whole sack off now. Get it? Don't. <laughs> yeah, don't play with it. Don't. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Don't I want thought you no like ten or something like ten? that. Ten, ten kids. Ten. We got six now. <laughs> That's so you enough. Need four more. Eight uh, is enough. You need four more for what? <laughs> no, we trying to enjoy ourselves. We trying to enjoy life. Wow. Because you be gone all the time anyway, right? Like almost yeah, I, every weekend I, you be gone. I, I hate that. Now that's the only part about the the industry that I don't like that much is that I'm gone on the weekends. And that's the time that you really get with your family and you go out Have a good time. and you go do things. And I guess by by my girl working, sometimes I just be like, quit. Come on the road with me. Yeah, yeah. You they're, gonna pay, they're gonna pay for the room in a way in the travel. Yeah. So we can go do what we gonna do and how long how I'll be in this through the daytime and play and let me go do my shows at nighttime. But she wanna work, so it's all good. She don't wanna work. I told her she can go and quit. Wow. I'm gonna work hard because I'm because I'm one of those man that like I I believe in taking care of mine already. Let's I do put, too. Put her in your camp and give her a role so she'll be working but working for you. 
Oh, working with you. Don't with never you. say that. Yeah, sorry. Working with you. Yeah, yeah. You can't. You can't say that. You see, <laughs> you see what you said. What you said. I dug down like <laughs> working with you. Yeah, working. Like, oh, so I work for you now. Yeah, that, yeah. That'll start this something real fast. That this what definitely will start some. Let me ask you a question, man. Uh, this is something I do, and, and and I heard you say Frankie Beverly Mays a while ago, and um, I, I do this thing called the top three artists of all times. I want to know dead or alive. Your top three artists in music of all time. And then I'm going to ask you about comedians, too, because I want to know. Mm -hmm. uh, top three, because I, I did that with somebody else that came on that did a certain something else, a segue on preaching, mm -hmm. remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to do the top three artists of all time, dead or alive. I don't know who sang the song, but the ah! song. <laughs> the, 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 hey, I love the song. It's like, only you can make that surface, me man. happy. That's yeah, surface, that, baby. Man, so that's number one? That, that, that's number one, because it all started with me. Happiness, and, and if I if I can make me happy, then I'm cool with that. That's surface, man. Yes. Uh, so surface. surface is number one. Um, I would have to go with um dead or alive. Dead or alive. I would have to go with um what's his name? I listen. That's to him, the first man. surface we got. Anytime I'm on the road, I listen to him. He's from Arkansas. If I wasn't trying to think of his name, what I, does he? What does he sing? He gospel. I, it, it's crazy. Tell us I a rap, song. Tell us I a rap, song. I rap, but I listen to a lot of gospel, gospel. music. Yeah. Tell us um, a song. Can you sing your song? I, I can't even think of it right now. Well, it ain't Marvin Sapp, is it? No, it ain't Marvin. It ain't Sapp. Fred Hammonds, no, is he, he from Arkansas? From Arkansas. He, he from um, he from Blyville. Blyville. You met this guy. I never met him, but I'm going to. Oh, you gonna meet him? I'm gonna meet and him. He's a big artist. He, he's, a, he's a big. He's a big artist. I'm gonna tell you his name before, be, um, before we get before we get out of here. Can I, and who's number three? Um, number three would have to be. Who would be number three? Dead or alive? Dead or alive? I don't know, cause I'm into oh Jermaine Dupri. Jermaine that's Dupri. My, that's my. That's my. That's my idol. You that's, you know that's, what? That's, now that's, that you said that, you kind of look like Jermaine that, Dupree. That, that is my yeah. Now idol. that you said that, you and Dem that, don't it? That, that's my idol. they kind of favor. So you you ever met Jermaine? Nope, I met his mama. And I'm you gonna met tell his you how, Oh, you I met his T. I'm gonna tell you how I met her. I was in Atlanta, and I always I wanted to meet Jermaine Dupree. I said I'm meeting for my birthday. It's right before COVID hit, so I. Googled the address. I went oh, you there. Went, <laughs> I, 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 say, I'm going over that boy's house. I, I, I Googled the address. Once I Googled this is, the address. This is a real comedian. He said he's just going to pull up on him. Yeah, I Googled the address. And when I Googled the address, I went up to the address to the studio. When I went to the studio, the lady say, um, we're not open. This is not a public studio. So I was like, okay. I said, well, look, I just got a package I want to drop off. She said, a package? I said, yeah, I have a T-shirt. I want to leave here, you know what I'm saying, that I wanted to give to him. She'd say, okay, well, Did wait one mean? minute. So I, w I was going to really, I was ringing the doorbell. She, nobody came to the doorbell. They heard the doorbell, but they didn't come. I started walking to my car, and I called. And when I called back, she answered the phone. I said, yeah, I'm outside. She said, so you the one at the little black car? I said, so you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but I got a, I got a T-shirt I want to drop off. And after I gave her the T-shirt, she said, come on in. She invited me into the studio. I got a chance to see some, a lot of the plats wow. or whatever. She was like, yes. I was like, and I told her who I was and how much her son expired me. But she didn't know I knew that was that was her son at first. Okay. So after so long, she went on and told me. And I still to So you day, knew it already? I already knew who she was because mm -hmm. I was a big fan. So you already yeah, seen, her already seen her pictures? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even to this day, I would call just to see how she doing. I was like, wow. I just called to see how you doing. I don't even ask her and about she remember you. Mm -mm, I don't even. No, but she, she remember you. She remember me. Okay. I don't even ask her about Jermaine. She said so many people be trying to talk to him. But see, my thing was build a relationship with the people around, around him. him. So them people would talk positive and good about me. So when they do run into me, you know, he you. ask them people, hey, look, do you know such and such? I got a lady like, like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going. I'm going to meet Jermaine Dupree. I believe you. His Did you ever get that number two? No, I didn't get his number. No, no, I'm saying the number two. The, the, no, I thought it was oh, you. Oh, number two, Tim Rogers. Tim Rogers. Mm, no, I never heard. Him. I got to look him up. What what Tim, he saying? Tim Rogers got, he got a lot of hits. I'm telling you. He's from Arkansas. He's from Arkansas. Tim Rogers. So Tim, it's, it's Tim, Surface, Tim Rogers, and Jermaine Dupree. Mm -hmm. I got my three. 
that that one thing about it, when you're on the road, you think about it, you're traveling, you listen to rap music, eventually all of it go to sound the same. Yeah, yeah. And you go to you follow you get getting sleepy. Yeah. You know, now I got certain rap music I can't listen to and I can vibe, but I can't vibe no seven hours with it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But Tim Rogers and the fellas and Lee Williams. Yeah. Man, I be on that highway, I be rolling. rolling. Mm-hmm. And don't let me go back to that mm-hmm. to that old that old school R and B. And I only play the down. whole song. I just play half of it. <laughs> Half of it. Yeah, half of it. That's all you, you just need enough to turn you up to when you skip to the next song, you be about to pull over and get out the car and start dancing. Wow. I will go get out and start dancing, but I ain't got no balance. And I don't want no big, <laughs> big truck to ride by and blow me down I with see, the wind. Hey, hey, man, I seen you on that road walking one day like you were going to leave everybody. They was in the uh, car and you were walking uh, down the road. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll that, take off on yeah. them. Myron, everybody be asking me why I keep running away on my skits. <laughs> we gonna tell y'all, but I'm not gonna tell you right now. There's a reason why I keep running, running away. away. And when I go, when when we tell y'all, it's gonna inspire so many people. You know what? I'm gonna go and tell y'all because y'all the first one with okay. the nice interview set up. <laughs> hey <whatever>. man, <laughs> boss got, talk 101 got, got me looking good. Got you I looking real I good. I never said did an interview in a high chair, <laughs> 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 but um, doing that man, this this um, this running away. I'm running away to success. Already. I'm trying to be successful. So that's why I keep running away. We finna eventually start bringing that up okay. to why they were like, people like, why you keep running away? Um, I got a goal, and I'm trying to show people no matter how many times people try to stop you, no matter how, no matter how many times you fall, I still get up, and every situation is different. Wow. So now we're going to start bringing in the celebrities to okay. where – you see me going to try to get to these people when I'm trying to tell them who I am. And eventually when I do blow up and I get to that point, I ran and ran into a boom. You ran into Here success. I, am. Awesome. I ran to I success. Like hey man, that's like great, that. man. That's a great concept. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Um, so um, what's your Instagram? Uh, where can they find you? Just one more time so we can get that on the air. Yeah, comedian Jesse McDonald on any social media. Comedian Jesse, Jesse with an I-E. And that's the. And is there a website they can go on for as where you perform to try to keep tag into that? Um, Tap into where you're gonna be next. I post a lot of it on my. page. Oh, it be on Instagram. That's what's up. Yeah, I I, that's on, why I see a lot I of activity it on my page. Yes. Yeah, and man. You have a YouTube comedian Jesse McDonald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we gonna, every platform. Every that's, platform, and that's good because that makes makes it to where wherever you easy. look. Yeah, man, yeah. We yeah. we boss talk one on one podcast. Mm-hmm. Yep, and if you look for me on uh, what's that? Uh, Christian Mingle. It's heat stroke. Already <laughs> heat stroke. No, I'm just, just playing. You should no, see the look she gave you a while ago. <laughs> she gave you a look a while no, ago. Hey, huh? So you got anything no, else no. for Mr. Jesse McDonald? Right man, we thank you for coming on the show, comedian Jesse McDonald, man. It. Now y'all got to oh, do. Oh, no, you said, I'm sorry. You said that you wanted to tell you the top three comedian. Bam, that's good because you're the first comedian we had. I need to, your top three comedian. Dead or alive. Top three, top Dead three. or alive. Cause that's really that's your passion too. Now I, I know you do rap too, so you didn't did it all. But give me the top three comedians, dead or alive. Top three. And, I, I'm, gonna and I'm gonna do you, that with all comedians. I'm gonna tell you too. why they my top three. Okay. okay. Ricky Smiley would be first. Ricky Smiley? I already yes. knew that he was He made coming. number one? I knew that yeah. was coming. The, the Ricky Smiley. Why the Ricky first, number one? Because Ricky, the first person that seen me and said, you need to be seen and I'm going to take you on the road. And, you, he, and he did exactly what he said. And you were around he, Ricky a lot. He took me, yes, he took me on the road. He he Ricky would sit on the side of the stage with a notebook and he would write down everything that I was doing wrong. And he would give it to me at the oh. end of the show and say, here. Go fix this. Ricky awesome. don't, don't, we, after right one show, Ricky came, I guess my DJ messed my music up, but I was so on point that nobody knew, but Ricky knew, and he went off on the DJ, and he went off on me, because he said, he's supposed to have his stuff together. And from there, it just taught me, he said, always be at your show an hour or two hours ahead of time. Oh, right. That way you can do sound check, you can get there to set up your merchandise, App, right before people start going and do another sound check. So a person that that big that takes the time out to sit on side of the stage and watch me and make notes of what I need to fix, you got to get number got one. Got to get number one. That's Cause, that's love, cause man. Because people don't tell, people don't help you get better. Shout out to that's Ricky true. Smiley, that's man. I, I loved it when he was on the radio here in Dallas, man. I I, I loved. I, I he was he he did his thing, man. 
Yeah. I always love the way Ricky do things, especially when he talk, do a little skit about the, the, the dead, talking to the dead people or whatever. Cora. Like, Cora. Oh, this dude. Oh, yeah. He's hilarious. But I, I, maybe one day we get I him on the him, show. I met him once a long time ago. He came over to a business. Remember when he used to go around to different yeah, places? Yeah, yeah. And he was over here in Pleasant Grove. Okay. And I saw him over there. and But he was pretty humble. Really? I like, I, I like him. Oh, he definitely loves his people, man. I do see him fighting. That was back for, when he had the dread. Yeah, he would stuff. fight for justice and all type of stuff. He, he definitely loved the culture and um, – a lot of respect and love mm -hmm. for him. Who's your number two? D-Ray. D-Ray? D-Ray. Is it because y'all be hanging out too? It's another hangout story. No, it, it's because the the energy that they, that they give me. And D-Ray did something that some people would get mad at, and I took it as a stepping stone. After I rocked three years on the road with D-Ray, he said, I'm going to have to let you go. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand why. And the reason why... Is because he told me, he say, you done grew on my platform. He say, now it's time for you to find another platform to grow on. He say, don't think it's the end, you know what I'm saying, we'll continue to grow. The, we was asking the top three, and, and you said Ricky Smiley, mm -hmm. and he D said D-Ray, and you was into yeah. that D-Ray story, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. So so D Ray was one that that you said he was pretty much uh a very much inspiration and after three years he just decided, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. You can't be here with us no more. Did yeah, he tell he, you why? He, he said we're gonna switch up. He said, What it is, you done grew on my platform. And he say, I see bigger things for you and I wanna see you grow bigger than what you are. So I'm gonna let you go and let you get on somebody else's platform. When you get on somebody else's platform, it opens you up to a bigger platform. And from that platform, it had to go to my next comedian, mm -hmm. Kerwin Claiborne. Kerwin Claiborne. Now, I ain't never heard I of Kerwin. I've never heard of him before. How you going to bring up Kerwin Claiborne? I ain't never heard of him. I thought you were going to say Richard Pryor, Martin Lawrence, and uh, 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 Chris Rock. But no, you went uh, 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 you went Ricky Smiley, a D Ray, and and what's his last guy name? Kerwin Claiborne. Kerwin Claiborne. Where well, see, the from? reason, don't, don't get me wrong, the ones that you name, I love them to death. Okay. But the reason I picked the ones that I picked Cause because they impacted you. Because they, they gave me a. They, they gave, gave you a, a chance. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, they gave yeah. you opportunity. Yes, and Kerwin Curl, Claiborne, like like they say, in this thing called comedy, there's a thing called being too funny and not funny enough. Okay. You can go out with some comedians and you could be too funny. And they were like, nope, don't put him on the show. Okay. You can go out and not be funny enough and they were like, oh, you got to come off the show. Mm. But Kerwin was gay, gave me a chance to come out. That's when I, I ran back into Elton, my manager. Gave me a chance to come out on 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 the tour and perform. Now, when I first came out, I'm not gonna lie, I was too strong for him. So Pope was like, "Look, you gotta ease back just a little bit." So I eased back a little bit, and once I eased back a little bit, then at so long, Curl would say, "No, let that man do him." He said, "Let him, right, right. let him go." He said because it makes the whole show funny. When you like the whole show funny, then people like it. They wouldn't, they wouldn't like hold back or nothing. He'd say, man, give, sometimes I go out and I be doing, doing certain jokes and sometimes I won't do them. He'd be like, man, why you didn't do that joke? You got to do it or whatever. <laughs> and sometimes my time be up like this weekend. My time was up and I didn't do a certain joke. He'd say, oh, no. He'd say, oh, he, he got to give away something to the birthday girl. <laughs> he got to get you and, back out and, there. And he let me come back and, and do my joke. And they, they inspired me to say, hey, look. Keep doing what you're doing, and he and he always say you're gonna have your own show. You're gonna you're gonna be doing your own tour. He said just keep going and keep grinding and getting these followers. Wow. He said because my followers every time I get on on live they always say where Jesse. I gotta get I got I gotta look him up. Where Jesse? I, I guess I'm weak in the fact that I don't know what's his name Claiborne Claiborne Cur Curl Claiborne. Curl Claiborne. Claiborne. He does Claiborne. the voiceovers. Oh, he does the voiceovers. He does the voiceovers. Okay, I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm definitely, and I can find him on IG, right? IG, the real Kerwin Claiborne. I got you. What's your most popular joke? My most popular joke. <laughs> I don't know. I got a lot got of a lot of you love cause, it because because <laughs> when you be doing when you be doing jokes, it's like I know once I get over it, now my beginning jokes, like I've been working new jokes. I know once I go through these couple of jokes, then I know when I get to this hump right here, is it's straight uphill. And it's nonstop. I got this alter ego. It's called heat stroke. Heat stroke. That's what he. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
heat stroke came to Tampa not too long ago, and I did heat stroke, and heat stroke was so strong, a girl made it rain. A thousand dollars worth of twenties on me. Wow. Wow. He stroke must be a bad boy. He stroke. He stroke. Give me, give, give me one of he strokes jokes. Let me hear. I can't do he. I can't do he stroke. Uh uh-uh. uh no, no, Look no, at she. Like, she, mm. she ain't giving she me permission. She's like uh uh-uh. uh. It must be a heck of a joke. But, but, but I can tell you one though. One it you can must take be to a the, hell of a joke. One, one you can take to the coffee he pot. He stroke. What is the best way to get a crackhead to go to church? I don't know. Sing Jesus is my rock. <laughs> <laughs> so you just get up there and go all night long, baby. I just have fun, man. That's that's all right, man. Thank you so much, Jesse, I for coming I, on the and, show. And man. you know, I can't come on the show without thanking Black. Black, you know, man. Black, Black was the Black, reason it happened. Black, Black made that call. You know, um, Black, Black been talking to me back and forth. You know, he what seemed like he got so and, much love for you. He said, he said, look, even though. I ain't managing you or nothing, but I see potential in you. He loved you, and man. and I I, I like I like what you do. He said, "Man, I got a I got a partner that got this TV, this talk show called Boss Talk." I said, "I need to be on there because I'm a boss and I like to talk." <laughs> there <laughs> so it is, baby. He made that call, and here I am, man. And I look for the 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 um. Well, what was you supposed to be sending me the address? I did. I, you didn't send it that day. No, not that day. No, I didn't send it that day. He almost had me feeling bad. I didn't send it that day. I didn't get the address. I was like, he'll be back in town later. (laughs) I get him. But so many people been coming at me about the show that I just, I, she know I get overwhelmed. Like it's, it's like people just now. I don't know what it is, but right now people been hitting us up so much, man. And it's a blessing from God, you know. But but I haven't forgot about you. But black, you know, he gonna call me because yeah, we were he, doing this way before. So he gonna be like, was, my girl called me say, I say, look, we doing something together Saturday. I was really I was gonna leave Chicago and go to Atlanta. Okay. But then I thought, I said, oh, I can't do that because I got an interview. Interview, yeah. And I'm yeah. like, I got to keep my word. And then, Thank you so much. Then I uh, told my girl, I said, we're doing some Sunday when I get back. Well, really, we're going to be Saturday. But yeah. what happened was I missed I missed my flight. So it happens. <laughs> I, ain't, I ended up pushing back. So I said, you know what? I'm still going to set it up. We're still going to do what we're going to do tomorrow. She said, well, what time is your interview? And I called Black. I said, man, you know what? He ain't even text me the address. I did tell you what time. I did say what I'm time the there. first day. One, yeah, I said, yeah. we said one from the jump. I thought it was 7 o'clock. No, it was one <laughs> yeah. from the very beginning. Oh, okay. But I didn't call you back because I got overwhelmed. I ain't going to lie. I usually give her the, uh, I did tell you about it, didn't I? Yes, but you didn't give me the information. I didn't give you the information. And that's the reason It's on why. me. That's on me, man. It's I all apologize. Good. We still made it happen. One thing about it, I know whenever you in Dallas and you're doing a project or wherever, if you're in Houston, you, you hit us up or wherever if you somewhere even Shreveport because we got a house down there where we go down there as well I'll come to your show yeah, and you all um, y'all make sure y'all tap into Boss Talk man because one thing I do like they embrace me they say they're gonna treat you regular they didn't have no handicap ramp nowhere <laughs> Yeah, the ah. handicap ramp, the handicap parking was in another parking lot. <laughs> you about to have to go all the way to the end to get to the end. I was doing the name they trying to get up that one step just to get up in the stove. Ah. But they, y'all make sure y'all man, stop by. Man, thank you so much for coming, man. Appreciate you, man. We wish yes. you much love and success, man. We, hey, your kids, man. We, we wish you all the success in the world, right? Yes, sir. And, and uh, real quick, people, if you got a... a kid that's disabled don't treat them like they're disabled wow. because that grows into their mind into their mind that they're disabled that's good treat them like they're regular treat that's them good. When, treat them the way you know what i'm saying you want the world to treat them that way when they go out there in the world then the world won't hurt them that's good because i have kids i was walking in the airport and the little girl say mom why he walk with the crutch she said don't ask him that i say no let her ask that way she know how to deal with handicapped people when it comes across. And I told the little girl, I say, I have cerebral palsy. Yeah. And she say, well, where is cerebral palsy? I'm going to say, stop <laughs> asking these questions. I say, no, let her ask because she needs to know. She need to know. I say, well, what it is, I don't have feeling in my hand or in the bottom of my feet. I have it, but it's it's rough. Yeah. I, it's hard for me to feel. She said, so you can't feel nothing? I say, I walk hard so I can feel the pressure yeah. going down. And the lady was like, Thank you. She said nobody never never explained never it. got a chance to explain. It. I say that, that's when kids growing up being bullies. Well, I don't call it bullies. That's when people grow up talking about people because they don't know. They don't understand right, it. Lack of knowledge. But it's so crazy because um, I'm older and people. It was always a sensitive 
subject. When you see someone who might be disabled, you don't want to pry in their business because you don't know how a person might handle it. So you're scared to even ask. Everybody but, ain't got tough skin like you. Uh, well, right. the, the thing is, that's the reason I'm here. That's the reason I, I, that's the reason I have my platform to show people, look, if he can get out there and do it, they can get out there and do it too. Because a lot of people don't know I used to be a cheerleader. What? I was, I was a cheerleader high school through junior, I mean, I mean junior high through college. How the hell you pull that off? Hey, look, I had a big mouth, and I knew how to talk. I wanted to be, I wanted to be out there with the people. Okay. I wanted, and the more I was out there with the people, the more I got, got comfortable with being me. Wow, that's good stuff. And man. I, and I was a water boy for the for the um, basketball that's, team too. So wow. got to give a shout out to them, to them champs, Mariana Trojans. Okay. We won okay. Number one in the regional. Okay. Number one in the district. In Arkansas. And number one in Don't the come up here in Texas with that, man. Number one in the country. In Arkansas. Hey, in in Arkansas. Arkansas. It, it don't matter where we at, we number one. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so so if you in Texas, you in Don't bring know, that over here, man. If you're number one in Texas. Don't bring that over if you here. Go, if you go to L.A., so you still not number one? Are we still number one? Okay, so only in Texas though, right? No, no it's no, different. That's, di if, that's if, different. If I'm only in Look Arkansas, out now, Jesse, that's only a little different. That's a little different hey, right hey, there. Hey, don't you? Yeah. Country people want it a little bit better than some city people. That's real talk. So, so I was gonna ask you when you because we were about to go off there, but I was gonna ask you about uh, even if there like a, a kid that's going through that has cerebral palsy or if he's handicapped or something. They can look at you as an inspiration. You're so true. Do, is there any way that they, is there an outlet? Is there an outreach some kind of way? They can reach you. I mean, I think that would be great for kids who don't so, have that tough skin. Like social for, media. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah, know social, social media and, and is there. You know what? You can call me. You see what I'm saying? I my, think that would be my, great my for somebody. My daughter has it too. Really? So yeah, you can reach you can reach out and call me. My number is on my social media. Don't call me at the hours because <laughs> you call me at the hours and make it look like you know what I'm saying, you're trying to make a booty call and, <laughs> and I ain't got time to be sleeping on the couch because you wanna call just say, Hey, look, I, I like what you're doing, keep doing what you're doing. No, no, not that you part, know. right? But the you kids know. though, they, yeah. they really yeah. can look at you and be inspired because yeah. hey, you're right. You know, they they don't have that that person that they can depend on that I know of. You may know of somebody. That's right. I like to do. I, I like to do bullying. Talk. You know, saying the bullying month because you can go talk about people. I mean, talk to people. Be like, look, I got bullied through high school, but then when you when you leave, they see a, a normal person walking. Yeah. When I first walk in the building, you already, they already like, know oh, he done caught oh, it. Oh look! Oh look at that! You already. <laughs> it ain't that he done caught it. You already giving it to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And at the same time, you don't know who I am. Then when I get up there and I talk and I tell you what I've been through in my story and everything that, you know what I'm saying, that, I, that I'm that through. You've overcome, that you overcame too. Now you look at me different. Yeah. You don't look at me the same, Not the at same all. way. Do you go to a lot of schools and, and talk to the kids? Not yet because uh, everybody ain't got handicap ramps. But <laughs> <laughs> Just do. No, no I, I'm, I'm trying to. But That'd be it's, great. It, it's hard getting in. Um. I've been reaching out to a lot, a lot of them, but once they let me in, they're gonna see. Oh, you gonna kick the door do down? I minute. bring a message. I bring comedy. I bring laughter, and I bring music. That would help your kids talk so about much. It, you know what? I'm, I know a couple of people in the school district. I'm gonna reach out to them and see if I can help make that happen. Yes, and I, I have a couple of high school hecklers that'll try me. You know what I'm saying? Try to throw a joke out there. You but your mind better be running like a car on the interstate. <laughs> Full of full of gas because I'm I'm ready. You own it. Because I, I can I can I can be doing a joke and I can you try to help me I can hit you with my joke and stay continuing with my joke and going like I never see it like you never said you've been prepared already exactly because you've been already out here doing the work for so many years. A lot of people haven't been in the game that long to even be even people that don't have no uh, uh, no handicaps or whatever. Think about them. They go off the scene. Everybody you have got I, a handicap. I don't know though. Have you? Read. You're right. I, I, I don't yeah, even want to talk about that. I could have said that. But you know the crazy thing Ooh, Wait a minute. You talk about helping um, young kids, but, you know, you have a lot of older, older, older people, people. Yeah. who yeah. have been, who are handicapped now because of circumstances in their life. And you know how when we're older, it's harder for us to handle certain things rather than a kid yeah. growing up. It's like it hit us harder because it's like, okay, we used to been able to walk, but now I can't walk. I can't, especially for men being a provider and now they feel like I can't provide because I'm stuck in this chair or I'm stuck, you know, not yeah. being the person I used to can be. That's the reason I work so hard now. So when it, it come down to that point to where I can't work, I didn't work hard enough to where I got residuals coming in. Hey. No residuals going to take care of my family. 
That's when I, and people see me sometimes, they be like, oh, let me help you. No, I got it. I done been on stage with Yin Yang Twins, and I fell in the middle of the in the middle of the performance. And when I fell off stage, nobody knew where I was, but they still heard me rapping. <laughs> I was still rapping, but they, 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 you could tell they was trying to figure out where I was at. And I crawled from up under the stage and climbed back up on stage. They went the back, back in. And I was still going. So it's like, you know, the thing is, you just got to continue to grind that no matter what, no matter what happened. I love your spirit. Yeah. I know Ricky yeah. Smiley had a hell of a good time with you. you got to I already have know it. he had a good time with you. You're, I wish I could have been around to see that. That that would have been something to see. Yes, you just got to you got to continue to like I say motivate people. But I yeah. love I love where we're at right now because as I said, you know, growing up and seeing a lot of people who are disabled, they weren't pushing to create a path for, you know, other people before them. They were just sitting down and whether collecting disability or not trying to do something with their lives. But I have friends or I know other people who are yeah, disabled. Yeah, we got a lot of friends. And disabled. they're on social media selling stuff, yeah, doing different yeah. things, and, you know, doing something with their Hustling lives and now. showing that it's a lot life deal doesn't with the, end. A lot of it deal with the parents. The parents, you got to find that talent that you're – that your child into, and you got to push them and you got to motivate them. I ain't had nobody. The my mama liked. She knew what I did in the music, but she was like, "Ah, I ain't into all that rap. You can do it." But I was like, my thing was, I wanted my family to come out to see me. They really wasn't coming to see me. But my thing was, I took it as at first. I was like, they're not supporting me. Then I had to start thinking, man, let me look at it a different way. They're t- they're supporting me in a tougher way. But the thing is, the people that you want the support from, they're, you're getting tough to love from them. So you, the first thing you say, they're not supporting me. Well, they're supporting you in a way that you don't see it. You may not be around and they be talking about you, but they may not come to your show. The thing is, I learned how to work so hard at my show to where I was so good at what I do. People start going back and telling them, oh, it was a little handicapped dude on the show. Man, he was funny as I don't know what. He had a crutch. And my sister there the whole time, like, that's my brother. Wow. And they were like, that's your brother? Shoot. They were like, man, he killed the show. He was funnier than such and such. He was funnier than such and such. Wow. And, you know, you get a lot of time people like, oh, you were funnier than such and such. Well, the thing is when people come up to me and tell me, oh, you you should have been the headliner. You're funnier than such and such. Well, I look at it. Nobody's better than to you. I was funnier than that person. Correct. But we all set the show up to for the next person. Correct. Mm-hmm. The one person come out funny, he set it up for this person. This person bring out the funny to the next level for the next person. So we all set it up to for everybody to be funny. Is nobody's better than the next person on the tours that I've been on. And that's one reason I picked my top three like that. Hey man. Did you uh, sorry, babe. Go ahead. The, um did your family eventually ever come out to see you? Yeah, they started coming. Well come see, on, well, I had to be I'm smart. Just, my mama ain't really ain't gonna come to my comedy show because she know I curse. Yeah. So okay. I say, how can I get her? I start going to churches. Hey. And I stop. I stop performing Busting at the, the church. Dough down and my mom, my mama be in the choir stand. I be doing a joke, and she be, I be looking at her. She be on the edge, like, oh, I hope he don't. <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna say it. But yeah. And I start, I start going in into churches because my granddad and is R.I.P. to him. But it's like. He wouldn't, he always tell me, keep going, doing what you're going to do. And before you know it, my grandpa, every time I would show up to do a comedy show at a church, he always be talking, my grandson, he good, he mm-hmm. good. And I did the Lee Williams farewell tour. Um, and my granddad was there. He got a chance to see me perform. And I wow. I did comedy when he passed away. I was supposed to make, the, I, I got my shows mixed up the day of the funeral. And the day he passed away, I had a show mm-hmm. an hour right before they told me. And. I still went on stage and did the show. Wow. But for the funeral, since I didn't make it, I recorded myself doing the video. And I sent the video in. Nobody knew I was doing it, but I knew the preacher. I said, look, you got to play this video for my family. And I I did a comedy set on my iPhone, and I sent it, and they played it at the funeral. And Wow, man, that's a touching story. We definitely, man, like I said, whenever you're in Dallas, whenever you um, – Doing your thing, man. We definitely need you to come back through here. If there's any new you. projects that you have come out, if you want a movie or because anything could happen for Jesse McDonald, mm-hmm. comedian Jesse McDonald, he, he could do be anywhere doing anything. And I know the capability of God. God can put you in places where man can't. Yep. So, so I definitely appreciate you for coming on the show, man. This has been another great segment of Boss mm-hmm. Talk One Hundred and One. Now y'all got to support me and get 
The I ain't drunk. I just walked this way. T-shirts. Come on with I it. Got, I got to bring. I, I'm in a different Come car, but I'm bring. I'm, I got the T-shirts. I got the face mask. I'm gonna tell you something, so. with you, y'all. You gotta do. Is, you should have had it with you today. You ain't said nothing. Well, Why you it, ain't had it with you? Because it's date night. It's date <laughs> oh, day. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Get I'm it right. I'll be it's, on the road, so I got to spoil the baby when 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 I come home. So. Well, we just glad you came by, and you yes. are, you can bring those t-shirts back by here when you back in town, man. We here. If I'm not here, you know, you can always just call, call me. I'll come meet you wherever I, you at, man. I got you. Hey, man, Boss Talk One Hundred and One. It's a unique hustle.